So uh, today we're going to talk about uh, K2. Uh, it's a beginner's uh, session and uh, first uh, a few words about what K2 is. And then I'm going to show you quickly the most basic functionality and how that uh, can benefit you compared to using the standard Joomla content attributes. So to begin with, let's see some uh, general facts for content as it stands today within uh, Joomla. Um, as you know, uh, well, either even if you're a newbie or an advanced user, you know that uh, Joomla content is very uh, Spartan, uh, meaning that we only have the title and the basic uh, context of the, of the article. Um, in order for us to simulate modern um, design patterns and uh, content patterns, uh, we have to install at least a dozen extensions uh, just to get basic uh, uh, stuff like uh, being able to blog or uh, have uh, videos or image galleries within our content. And um, of course the, uh, the end solution for that, the resulting package, is limited and it's very difficult uh, to maintain. So in other words, if you want to have a web 2.0 uh, website, as, we, uh, as it stands today, you have to install many extensions, and this can be very difficult to manage, and uh, not to mention other problems that may occur. And this is where K2 comes in. K2, uh, it's uh, now had its first uh, birthday, um, it's, uh, it's a more powerful content component, uh, a, a co-content replacement as uh, some have called it, and it's got um, CCK-like features, which is, uh, CCK is a term that is used from the Drupal content management system, and uh, it basically outlines that uh, uh, the CCK is a functionality with which you can extend uh, content items, articles in Joomla with more fields. This is what K2 can do. Uh, to sum it up, uh, we can say that K2 is uh, Joomla's articles thrown into the mixer with uh, Drupal's CCK functionalities and WordPress's blogging feature. And all that uh, with uh, uh, the templating flexibility that Joomla can give us. So let's see what we can do with uh, K2. Using the K2 component and associated modules and plugins, it's very easy uh, to build a powerful portal magazine uh, with author blogs. We can uh, use K2 to build a catalog for whatever uh, products uh, or a work portfolio. We can easily uh, do uh, blogs, a knowledge base, uh, a download document manager, directory listings, even event listings. So, uh, let's see the basic K2 features. We have, this is actually dismissing like, uh, you know, the specs from Jura 1.6, but actually it's, uh, it's something that you can use, uh, you can leverage today. We have nested level categories, we have a powerful comment system, we have tags, extra fields. Uh, these are the fields uh, which are, this is the system basically that's called CCK in the Drupal world. And this is uh, the, the real power of K2. We can actually extend the article form with additional fields and uh, customize our input forms however we, we see fit. We have uh, as standard the item image, which is very useful when you develop websites uh, like portals or like catalogs where you want to upload images uh, that they will be resized and uh, fit to specific uh, dimensions. We also have image galleries and videos uh, by default. Um, we utilize two plugins that we developed as JunoWorks, uh, the old videos plugin for videos and the simple image gallery plugin for uh, image galleries. And we also have attachments. These are basic stuff that are available with K2. Aside that, the more advanced stuff is uh, user profiles and blogs. Uh, every user uh, within K2 has its own blog. Basically, every Joomla user 
uh, can have its uh, their blog page from within uh, K2. We have a versatile access control level system, something that is uh, also coming in Juno 1.6, but it's available in a very uh, simplified form for K2. We have uh, fronted editing. We have a very powerful plugin system with which uh, we can extend uh, both the back end and the front end of K2. So uh, the cool thing about this is that uh, we, we, we don't just have the CCK-like uh, uh, system with the extra fields, um, but we have, uh, if we're a developer, we can extend the item forms and uh, uh, you know, uh, customize uh, the forms of K2 and of course our website exactly as we like it. So we can create, for example, a uh, Google Maps plugin uh, that has uh, its its own form within the uh, the, the backend uh, where we write our uh, our content. Uh, now we have uh, this. These are new features that pair the front end editing thing. Uh, we've added uh, comments moderation from the front end as well, so you can have your bloggers moderate the comments of their own articles. And the other thing that we just added is uh, search integration uh, with the Google Ajax uh, search API. Of course, there are more things here and there, but these are the, the, the most significant ones. Now, the question, why use K2? Of course, I'm going to show you in a while uh, how to build a website with K2, but um, the reason that we built K2 and the reason that you should consider using K2 instead of core articles are uh, very, uh, um, we have a point, yeah. this, is, this is what I want to say. First of all, as we know, Joomla has been uh, behind uh, the other competing content management systems like Drupal or WordPress. Um, uh, this, this comes down to things like uh, social features and flexibility, and not to mention uh, categorization, like with Drupal we have nested categories or uh, ACL, which is already there for, uh, for Drupal as well. Um, and the, uh, the, the features uh, that these CMSs have and uh, how they can be extended. Uh, these, these two CMSs, Drupal and WordPress, have been uh, a few steps ahead of uh, Joomla in, uh, in many things. But the one thing that they still lack is uh, the development flexibility and templating flexibility of Joomla. So this is number one reason why we made Q, uh, why, why we made K2, and uh, why we didn't choose to work with Drupal or WordPress. The second reason is that um, uh, Joomla 1 and 1.5 and now 1.6 are practically the same for, uh, when it comes to features for the end user. Uh, now with Joomla 1.6, what we've seen added is uh, very basic stuff. Uh, and it's certainly things that, that, that are, were, that were available for the uh, for the end user. They are available for the end user even now. You can install a comments extension, an ACL extension, so you can modify Joomla 1.5 uh, to suit your needs. So Joomla 1.6 doesn't really bring many new features. It just integrates things that are already available within the extensions market. The third thing that made us uh, going to development of K2 is the slow development cycle for Joomla. I think it took uh, um, almost two years to develop Joomla 1.5 and actually release it. And uh, it's also estimated that uh, Joomla 1.6 will not be around till 2011. So uh, I guess this is a point that uh, further strengthens uh, number one point and uh, why the other CMSs have gone steps further compared to Joomla. So, uh, let's see some facts now about K2. Uh, like I said, uh, it had its first birthday. Uh, we, re first, uh, we originally released K2 uh, last year in March. And uh, now it's been downloaded more than 200,000 times. It's been uh, translated in many languages. Uh, there is a dedicated uh, Dutch language team as well, and they uh, they make sure that they always uh, maintain the language files up to date. Compared to other uh, similar components that extend uh, uh, Joomla's content uh, features, 
Um, K2 could be considered to be the de facto uh, COVID component, as uh, uh, this, this is an indication uh, not only from the downloads count uh, or the available translations, but uh, this is something that is clearly shown by how well the template designers have embraced K2. It's uh, easy to say that um, almost all major Joomla template providers have embraced K2 and have developed either K2 uh, only uh, templates or K2 specific templates, meaning that they uh, usually bundle uh, styling for K2 uh, as default with, with their templates. Uh, the most uh, active ones releasing, uh, constantly releasing K2 templates are uh, Joomla Plates and Joomla Bamboo. Uh, you all know Rocket Team, I guess, and Joomla. And uh, the newest ones are Gabby Pro and Joomla Zen. More facts on K2. Uh, it currently powers two of the world's highest traffic Joomla websites. This is a, um, a, a small, uh, there's um, this uh, quite popular blog, which I'm sure you know, aladia.com. It's run by Steve Birds, who is now uh, the Open Source Matters Board. It's a company that runs Joomla, basically. So this guy, um, he, uh, he did a research like a year ago, um, trying to find which are the highest traffic websites within the Joomla community. So at that time, uh, after Joomla.org, we have gazeta.gr uh, and tnarrestling.com. These are two sports websites which are very popular. They do over, uh, Gazeta does 5.5 uh, unique million, million, uh, 5.5 million users per month. TNA is, uh, I think, around 3 uh, million uh, unique users uh, per month as well. And we have, uh, within this year, we've had, uh, we've seen uh, many websites embrace K2. Uh, recently, we saw the famous, uh, the, the Gorillas band, which is a UK band, which they, uh, they switched to Juma and K2. And there was this um, uh, arts website called the Arts Desk which was awarded by the Telegraph in the UK as well. Uh, all these are websites using K2. And of course, uh, since many template developers embrace K2, like I told you before, we have uh, Joomla Place and Joomla Bamboo. These are two big template providers. They use K2 for, uh, for everything within their websites. To present their templates, uh, to uh, uh, present their news, they use templates for, for everything. And of course we have thousands of uh, personal or business websites around the world using K2. And uh, it may not seem, uh, you know, you have to dig to find it and to find out that it's K2, but uh, uh, we've seen some pretty amazing works and uh, the community website that we have for K2 where people can uh, go and ask questions. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good place where we list many of these websites. So you can see some very professional works uh, built with K2. So uh, last year I did a similar talk about K2, but that was uh, you know, when K2 started. I guess uh, uh, quite many of you may already know K2, but uh, what I can do by now, uh, although you may not have had the chance to actually use it. So I'm going to show you how fast we can uh, build a few things with K2. So I just uh, set up a, a basic Joomla uh, website. It's a clean installation with uh, K2. Uh, the sample data is installed, and this is the administrator uh, view. So the first thing you do is, uh, of course, download K2 from the, uh, uh, the project website. Everything comes into a package which is easy to install, and most, above all, it's uh, easy to update. So when we have a new version of K2, you just 
download the package and install on top, and everything will be updated without messing with your uh, content or anything. Uh, your templates, of course, will not uh, be tampered, and uh, your website is going to uh, enjoy all the new functionality that, came, that the new version will bring without any hassle uh, for you. So this is the first uh, installation screen, and we have a, a small table uh, showing what's being installed. Um, K2 bundles by default Joomfish elements as well, so if you're using Joomfish, if, you, if your website is uh, you know, multinational, um, then uh, you can easily use K2 to uh, uh, present your content in different languages as well. After the installation, we can go to the K2 component. As you can see, it's, uh, it's very close to how Joomla's front page in the administrator view is. Uh, there's a reason for that. We, we want people to feel um, uh, acquainted with the system. So we didn't take, the, uh, we didn't take a different uh, design approach uh, for the, uh, the backend system. The only difference is that, and this is something that has been uh, uh, used in Joomla 1.6, We've just gathered all functionality in a simple menu on top, as you can see. And this is where your content editors will basically work. So, uh, once we install K2, we see that everything is empty. We don't bundle it with some data uh, at the moment. But what we can do is we can import all content from Joomla. So by just clicking this button, all content from Joomla uh, is now imported into K2, along with the categories. And as you can see, the categories, uh, well, it's sections and categories coming within to the K2 nested level category system. So you have the sections on the top level and the categories on the second level. But of course now we're able to build a proper nested level category system with an unlimited uh, depth uh, of categories. So let's see um, the things I explained before, what, what we see actually in the back end. Um, the, firstly, the menu uh, allows the basic functionalities, our items, our categories, the tag system, the comments uh, moderation system. We have our users, our user groups, uh, the extra fields and the extra field groups. This, this is the mechanism that, that extends the item forms. And we have uh, an uh, information uh, pane uh, that basically gives some statistical information about K2. So when we install K2 and uh, say that we import content or we start building content from scratch, the first thing that we normally do is uh, create some categories. Because the categories are the, you know, the places that are going to hold our items. So uh, let's see. Let's see what a category looks like uh, within K2. <coughs> now, if you if you've used the uh, Zoom uh, before, uh, you I'm sure you've seen. Uh, let's. It's, it's better to uh, to compare that. So this is the classic category manager within uh, Joomla. And as you can see, the categories pretty much don't offer anything. It's just the title and uh, you know, the section that this category is associated with. Some rights and image. It's a feature which I don't think anyone has ever used. And uh, basic description of the category. That's it. And then, you know, in order to set up a proper Joomla website, by using Joomla standard content, you have to define things that should be defined within the categories on the items page. 
So there's clearly a uh, you know a structure um, problem within Joomla now. So what we've done with K2 is we've tried to centralize things into categories. So you basically organize your content in the beginning and then you forget it. And it's easy for, uh, uh, if you have a multi-author environment, it's easy for uh, journalists to create new categories without having to uh, you know, know or uh, they don't have to basically yeah, know how, how the CMS works. Um, <coughs> It's, it's very easy to, to create the content and uh, extend it. So a, Zoom, a, a K2 category offers the basic stuff, of course, title and description. But now we have some new things. As you can see on the side, we have all these uh, sliders. They contain information about all the items that are going to be within this category. We use the term items and not articles as in Joomla because uh, items is a more generic term. It was originally used in Joomla 1 either way. And we use the term items because you can basically use K2 to create a catalog. So if you create a catalog, you don't have the term article within uh, your website. I'll do it. Um, I'll create. Create a menu item of a K2 category so that you can see what I'm talking about uh, in the front as well. This is an SVM uh, version, it's the most up-to-date, so uh, there may be some uh, uh, error warnings. Not, not a big deal. Yeah, okay, so we can easily Okay, so let's see. Um, Create make it to a specific category, the one I'm showing to you. Yeah, it's empty because the about Joomla uh, thing is a section, it's not a it's not a category, so it doesn't have any articles assigned to it. <laughs> this one. <laughs> okay, let's, let's proceed with the, the, the features of the category. So like I said, what we've done is uh, we try to centralize all settings within uh, its uh, K2 category. That means that when we, when we design our category system and basically structure our website, uh, we have to have, of course, uh, the title and some description in some cases. We can have an image uh, specific to the category, which can be used for catalogs. And then the, uh, the quite, quite a lot of options on the side, they may seem uh, you know, a bit difficult in the beginning but they're actually very comprehensive and uh, easy to use. So what we set up in these five um, uh, sliders is, uh, um, th is th these are settings that we will, we will set basically once and then we can replicate in other categories as well. So we see here stuff that are, that are basically, here, stuff that are basically in uh, Joomla within the menu uh, system. So we can see how many, we can uh, uh, structure our category page and have a uh, number of uh, leading items and primary items, secondary items. Basically set up blocks that are uh, 
uh, outside of the of the classic you know blog style uh, category. So to be more specific, this we can easily get something like this. So we can easily get something like this, as you can see here. This is one category used as a slideshow. Uh, one block used as a slideshow, the leading ones, the leading items. And these are the rest, uh, the primary items and the secondary items. So the first slider is uh, we set up how the items are going to show. Um, uh, we can have uh, the second slider is uh, what is what will show up at the top of the category, meaning uh, are we going to show the title of the category, the image, uh, all the subcategories. This is very useful for uh, when building catalogs. So if you uh, if you see something like uh, this, for example. We have a catalog system here, so um, we have subcategories, main category and subcategories, and we have defined within this place that we want to show the item, the title of the category, the image, and the description, and the RSS link. So we have all sorts of that uh, settings. We can define, we can also define the images, the sizes of the images here. So uh, within the categories, we have items. These items have, as I told you before, uh, specific images. And we can define the sizes of the images within the category settings. <coughs> so this is a basic stuff for easily creating a catalog within the K2. Aside that, we have, and these are the settings most used for, uh, for any website, we can clearly define within its uh, category how the articles are going to look when they are uh, listed all together, I mean, uh, in a situation like this. We can set up all the elements that you see here, the title, the author, the rating system, the image, the additional fields, the date, all this can be sent here. These are the options to do that. And they are very simple options with uh, an explanation if, if needed, if something is maybe you know, out of the ordinary. And it's, uh, it's very easy to customize the view of the category. So how the, the, the items are listed within a category. Finally, the last uh, slider within uh, uh, the category page outlines what elements will show up within the actual item. So this is this is the resulting page of the uh, of the key to item, and as you can see, we have uh, elements like the title, the author, uh, this toolbar which has a, a print email button and stuff, the rating, the image, text. Um, information about the author. Um, we have blogs like uh, you know latest items from this author or uh, related items. We have the comments blog. There are many elements, and for each of these elements, there's a, a switch within the category page, so you can completely um, customize the item view as you see fit. So the important thing as you realize is that we can create different categories. And uh, we can have uh, different. Uh, we, we can show different elements from each category. So within the same website, we can have a uh, place acting as a catalog, for example, like within the demo site. This place acts as a catalog, and all items within this catalog have a, sp a specific uh, format. But they are, they are presented in pairs, in two columns. Or we can have a uh, like a blog section where items are presented one below the other. 
and they also have uh, different, you know, different elements that are shown. So if you compare this page to to a catalog uh, page, for example, this one doesn't have you know additional uh, fields. One very important thing about the category system within K2 um, is that uh, we can uh, create category templates and uh, we can use these uh, category templates uh, to, create, uh, to, to create a very big uh, category structure without reassigning all these, uh, all these parameters because there, there, are, there are many. So what I'm saying is that um, when, uh, if I set up a category, you know, select all these uh, tidbits here, and save this thing, I can go to another category, and select that this other category inherits all the styling parameters, all the switches that I, uh, you know, uh, previously set up, um, they can be inherited by this new category. So what this means is that, uh, for example, the catalog case, we just outline how the, catalog, the basic category works, and then for each subsequent category, for each subcategory, we just say that um, no, this category should just inherit the parameters of its parent category, which is the catalog. So in that way, we can. Uh, uh, we create um, different categories as templates for a catalog, a blog, or a document uh, manager, or a download uh, a manager. And then we just assign all the subcategories to inherit the parameters of the parent category. So once we build our system, our category system, uh, we can now uh, start working on our items. As you can see, the, uh, the table of the items is very similar to the Joomla uh, table, uh, articles table. The only difference is that um, K2 utilizes a trash system as well. So we can, uh, so we, the, the difference with the Joomla articles is that uh, aside the extended features, we have our trash here. Our categories, everything else is the same. So let's see how a key to item is. Like I said, we have more information within the key to item. So, um, uh, aside the basic stuff like the title and the description, we have stuff like tags. The tag system is integrated. And of course, we just have the category. We have our uh, item specific image. This is an image that can be, um, uh, we can upload an image. So we can upload an image that can be resized in a specific dimension, like this one. But the resize happens in many steps, so, uh, well, we actually have many copies of the resized image. As you can see, we have a small image here, and a large image here, and there's an even bigger one here. Have image galleries, we need to install the plugin. Let me show you on the demo side.
So like I said, we have the, uh, the emails. Uh, we have an image gallery. We just upload the zip file, everything gets extracted, and we can even preview the gallery. We have our video. Uh, we utilize a plugin here, but on the newer version, we can just use a bit of an embed code. And we've just added some uh, new features, like um, uh, you can actually uh, browse your server for a video. We have the actual fields. As you can see, these are fields that are customized just for this item. And we can have attachments as well. So once we build our categories, we can start uh, filling in our content, our items. The, the, the good thing that K2 offers, um, the, uh, the extension capabilities, the extending capabilities are the extra fields, as I described earlier. Um, what we have here is um, we basically uh, we can create new fields that will be attached to the item form. So uh, these are fields that are shown, like for example, um, in the case of a catalog, we have these elements here, this information. These are uh, we need to have you know small boxes that would. Uh, allow us to input this data, and this is what we create with the ExoField system. So these are all ExoFields, and we can, we can create small blocks of uh, content, give it a name, uh, select what this thing is, if it's a text field or a, a link, or you can even upload, create a uh, text field that uploads tabular data through CSV. And once we create that, we create an extra field, we assign it to a group, and then we assign these other groups, just the name, and then we can assign this extra fields group to a specific uh, category. So in the case of the catalog, in the case of the catalog, um, we have, as you can see here, the associated edge of this group is this one. So once we create all these extra fields, we can, uh, these are automatically appended to the item form. These are the fields, and as you can see, they are visible here in the, in the front end. So um, the cool thing about the actual field system is that um, it's dynamic. So if we just change the catalog, if we change the category, then the associated uh, actual fields group is going to pop up. So the important thing is that when you create items, when you create a new item, you can select, if it's a blog item, for example, you can select a category and we'll pop up the associated actual fields. In this case, we don't have, but if we, if we made the catalog item, we have the associated fields represented. It's really, it's really uh, quite easy to see the, all these settings and uh, the parameters. Uh, once you've set up your content, create your categories, create some extra fields perhaps, and uh, you can start writing your items. And then uh, the only uh, thing that's needed is to actually assign these items uh, in the front end. So in that case, uh, we have uh, specific menu items for categories or tags, as you can see here. And this is what, what we use to build a structure like this. 
So I can make a menu item directly to an item, or a category, or a tag. And as you can see, categories compared to Joomla are uh, far more, uh, far simpler. If you select a category, uh, this is the only option that you need to adjust within the menu item, because everything else is taken care of within the category. The other options that we have are just basic stuff that change when we select many categories to create uh, menu items. So what we've done is that we've taken the burden of management, of menu management, and we put it into the K2 category system. And uh, so it's easy for your uh, content administrators uh, to, uh, of course, write content, create new categories, assigning, uh, you know, inheriting parameters from other categories, and they can create menus in a simplified way without having to know how many leading items we have, uh, how many uh, secondary items, and so on. Okay, Kotus, I think you still can go on for hours. I'm afraid it's uh, yes, it's it's quite. Uh, Time is running out. <laughs> it's quite. Uh, Kit really has many possibilities and many options. And it's, uh, it's really difficult to explain everything in 45 minutes. So the best thing that anyone can do is just uh, download K2, install it, and see now what uh, uh, see what you know uh, other CMSs have now within Joomla. Uh, for those that are going to um, uh, want to dig deeper, uh, we have the tutorials in the community website, and they can see how they can leverage the templating power of K2. Or they can, uh, you know, just uh, see what the template designers have made with K2, and see how easy it is to just use a component, one component, to build several functionality within your Joomla website. Are there accepting questions? Can you use uh, K2 for um, making modules too? Uh, K2 has uh, already some powerful modules. When you install K2, everything is there. It's, uh, we have five modules, if I recall. And uh, basically, you do everything with uh, more K2 content. It's, uh, it's like a Swiss Army Knife module, where you can select uh, categories and uh, uh, display them in any way that you want. This is, for example, a module, a K2 module. OK, we need to stop here. Uh, thoughts will still be available for today and tomorrow, so if you have any further questions, you can find them on the, somewhere on the Dr. Jumla table. I want to thank you. Thank you.